and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we'll be talking about a very interesting disease and one that has come up quite frequently in the worldwide news several times over the past few years, and that is the Ebola virus disease. So let's get started. So what is the Ebola virus? The Ebola virus disease is a deadly disease with occasional outbreaks that occur primarily on the African continent. The disease is also commonly referred to as Ebola hemorrhagic fever and most commonly affects people and non-human primates such as monkeys, gorillas and chimpanzees as well as fruit bats, forest antelope and porcupines. The disease is caused by an infection with a group of viruses within the genus Ebola virus. The Ebola virus was first discovered in 1976 near the Ebola River in what is now known as the Democratic Republic of Congo, so the DRC. Since then, the virus has been infecting people from time to time, leading to outbreaks in several African countries. So from this definition of the Ebola virus, we get that it's a disease that is actually quite deadly and occurs with these occasional outbreaks that primarily affect the African continent. So Ebola is actually commonly referred to as Ebola hemorrhagic fever, and that is because the disease causes mass bleeding in these patients, as well as a fever. So the word hemorrhage comes from the word hemorrhagic, which means to bleed out, and these patients also suffer quite an intense fever. So therefore, it's also called Ebola hemorrhagic fever. So the disease actually most commonly is carried by non-human primates, such as monkeys, gorillas, and chimpanzees, but fruit bats, some forest antelope, and porcupines can also be infected among humans. So the virus actually gets its name from the region it was first discovered, and that is the DRC, and it was first discovered near the Ebola River, hence the name Ebola virus. So if we take a closer look at this image on the right of my screen, we see that it tells us a little more about what the Ebola virus is. So it is believed that fruit bats inhibiting West African forests are the natural hosts of the virus. So all these West African countries are most primarily affected. So the countries located in this specific vicinity include Gabon, Congo, Cameroon, Nigeria, the DRC, which is situated somewhere here, the Central African Republic, South Sudan, Chad, etc. So these are the countries that are most commonly affected by the Ebola virus. So what the virus does in humans is that it first attacks the white blood cells and then infiltrates nearly every type of cell in the body. And it's highly deadly and it's called an hemorrhagic fever virus, resulting in a systemic viral infection throughout the entire body of these patients. So now that we know what the basics of the Ebola virus is, Let's take a closer look at how one can contract the disease. So the Ebola virus spreads to people initially through direct contact with blood, bodily fluids and tissues of infected animals, such as fruit bats, chimpanzees, gorillas, monkeys, forest antelope or porcupines. This means that killing or eating the infected animals can spread the virus to a human and it is believed that the virus may then spread between one human to another. So now we have human to human transmission once the initial infection is gotten from the infected animal. So the Ebola virus spreads only by direct contact with blood or other bodily fluids of a person who has developed symptoms of the disease. So bodily fluids that may contain the Ebola virus include saliva, mucus, vomit, feces, sweat, tears, breast milk, urine, and semen. So the initial infection of the Ebola virus is actually passed on to humans if they come into direct contact with either blood, bodily fluids, or tissues of the infected animals. So the infected fruit bats or primates are the first point of contact to humans, and these are how the humans become infected. And once the humans become infected, we now have the human-to-human -human transmission of the disease, and this can happen through any sort of bodily fluids. So if one human who has the Ebola virus comes into contact with someone who doesn't have the Ebola virus and the uninfected person comes into contact with their saliva, their mucus, their vomit, urine, feces, sweat or semen, they will contract the disease in this way. So one may also contract the disease with objects contaminated with the virus such as needles and medical equipment and they may actually possibly contract the disease with semen from a man who has recovered from Ebola. 
either by having vaginal, oral, or anal sex. So these are the various ways in which the virus can actually spread. So moving on, let's explore some signs and symptoms of the disease. So unfortunately, the early signs and symptoms of the Ebola virus disease are non-specific, and they include fever, a headache, which is often quite severe, weakness, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach discomfort or pain in the abdomen, a decreased appetite, and joint and muscle discomfort. So because the early signs and symptoms are so nonspecific and sporadic, it's very difficult to actually tell if one actually has the disease or not. And therefore, this is a great concern to us because we're not sure if these people are infectious or not. So therefore, they need to be quarantined even if they just show a few early signs and symptoms that aren't actually very specific. So continuing with the signs and symptoms, we then have the late signs and symptoms, and these are a bit more specific to the virus itself. So as the disease progresses, patients may develop other signs and symptoms, such as a rash or red spots on the skin. And this is actually what that hemorrhagic rash looks like, and it can affect the entire body of the patient. They will then have eye redness, hiccups, a sore throat, cough or coughing up blood, vomiting up blood, chest pain, mental confusion, bleeding both inside and outside of the body, for example, from the mucosal surfaces, such as the eyes and the nose. So as we can see here, the patient has epistaxis, which is the bleeding from the nasal cavity, and a difficulty in swallowing and breathing. So in addition to that fever, the disease is also quite hemorrhagic, which means that we have this hemorrhagic rash which appears, which means that it's a rash which actually bleeds out. So these patients are constantly losing blood. They lose blood through their nose, their mouth, their eyes. They can also have fresh blood in their feces, which is called hematochesia. So they will suffer a great deal of blood loss in the disease. They may also cough up blood, and this is called hemoptysis. And they will also have a difficulty in swallowing and breathing. So as we can see, the effects of the disease are quite severe and quite serious. And this is why the prognosis of the disease is actually so poor, and the disease is actually known as being a very deadly disease. So moving on, let's explore the diagnosis of the Ebola virus. So physicians preliminary diagnose Ebola hemorrhagic fever by clinical suspicion due to the association with other individuals with Ebola together with the combination of the Ebola-like symptoms. So if a patient comes through and mentions that they have been in contact with someone who did test positive for the Ebola virus, and then they also displaying some sort of non-specific signs and symptoms that could actually mean that they have the Ebola virus, we can put the patient down as suspected Ebola virus positive. So within a few days after symptoms and signs develop in patients, Tests such as the ELISA or the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay based on antigen capture or RT-PCR, which is reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction, and or a virus isolation can provide a definitive diagnosis. So the disease can only be diagnosed a few days after the signs and symptoms are apparent and is usually confirmed with either an ELISA test or a reverse transcription PCR test. So later in the disease, or if the patient recovers, it's possible to detect IgM or IgG antibodies against the infecting Ebola strain. So quite later on in the disease, if the patient has recovered, we will be able to see the increase in those IgM antibodies as well as the IgG antibodies against the Ebola virus. The treatment of Ebola. So there is no specific antiviral medications that have proved effective in treating the Ebola infection. Therefore, the only treatment is supportive hospital care. And this is done by providing fluids to the patient, maintaining their blood pressure, providing them with oxygen as needed, replacing their lost blood, and treating the other infections that might develop. So there's no specific antiviral treatment against the Ebola virus and therefore we'll have to provide a supportive treatment to them. And we do this by maintaining their fluids and electrolytes, their blood pressure, their oxygen saturation levels, 
replacing any of their lost blood because as we said the disease is quite hemorrhagic they may bleed out internally as well as from multiple orifices and we can also treat any infections that might set in while the current Ebola infection is carrying on and these are usually opportunistic infections or nosocomial infections and might need to be treated with antibiotics. And finally, let's talk a little more about the Ebola vaccine. So part of the prevention strategy of the Ebola virus, we do have an Ebola vaccine, which is called RVSV ZBOV. And this was approved in the United States in December 2019, and it appears to be fully effective within 10 days after being given. And it was studied in Guinea between 2014 and 2016. And since then, more than 100,000 people have actually been vaccinated against the Ebola virus as of 2019. So as we can see, there is development and there are small steps in the right direction in terms of disease prevention here. So if one is traveling to an area which is known for Ebola outbreaks, it's definitely a good idea to get vaccinated before you travel to that specific area because the vaccine proves to be quite successful in preventing the development of the disease. And that brings us to the end of this video on the Ebola virus. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And please make sure you turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.